Hello. In this tutorial, we're going to be discussing how to animate the wait option inside of an arrive director in order to transfer agents from a flock generator from one piece of text to another. And this is what the effect is going to look like. Okay, so here we are in Modeler, and I went ahead and modeled all the objects. I'm not going to go through that part, but we have some berries. We have a uh, cherry. What else do we got? An orange. A kiwi. Just a slice of it, and also a lemon slice. Now, to go along with those objects, I also have some text, such as fruit and yum. Now what's going to happen is we're going to take those objects and we're going to instance them a bunch of times and have them first flock to the fruit piece of text and then transfer from the fruit piece of text to the yum text. If I switch to textured wired view, you'll see that the fruit text and yum are both subdivided pretty heavily. That's so that the agents from the generator will have more places to stick to once they flock to it. So let's jump into layout and get this effect going. In layout, the first thing I want to do is just set the time frame to about 200 frames. And then what I want to do is go into the scene editor. And I just want to hide all of these objects from OpenGL and from the render. So to do that, I'm going to select this little icon here and just hit hidden for all of these. And also for the render. Now what we can do is under objects here, you can see we can still select all of them because we don't want the original objects of these positioned at 0, 0 to show up in the render and we don't want them to get in the way in OpenGL. We only want the instances to appear. So that's why I just hid them from OpenGL and from the render. Now the first thing to do is add a flock generator to the scene. So I'm just going to go to Windows, Flocking, and let's add a new generator. You'll see we have one right there. Let's open up the properties and change a few of the settings. First, I want to move it away from the 00, zero origin. For the count on the X, I'm going to make it 150. On the Y, I'm going to keep it as the default 3 and same for the Z, 3. For the size, let's make it 10 meters on the X and Let's keep Y the same, and for Z, let's make that 2 meters. Okay, so now if we hit Calculate, you'll see that all of our agents have appeared that we are going to attach our instances to. Under the Agents tab, there's also a few settings that I want to change in here. Basically, I want to set all the ranges to be 0, and this will ensure that the agents stick directly to the piece of text and they're not going to move once they get to it. Now I'm going to go into the fruit text layer. And under the properties, I'm going to add a flock director. And we want the type to be arrive. For this range, zero arrival radius, I'm going to set that to zero as well, just to really make sure that these agents stick to the text. Decelerate radius, I'm going to set that to 1, and weight and strength is fine for now. So if I go ahead and hit calculate, you'll see that we already have our first part of the effect pretty much completed. Let's take a look at that. Alright, so that's pretty cool already. Now what I want to do is go into the yum text. Let's select that layer. Let's go to the properties and also add a flock director. Arrive is fine. I'm also going to set this radius to zero, the, the decelerate radius to one. And for this weight, I'm going to set it to zero. Now the weight of the fruit text is one. So that means that uh, the yum text at this point is going to be completely avoided by the agents. Now, in order to get the agents to switch from the fruit text to the yum text, we have to create a weight envelope. So let's go to the fruit text 
for the properties. And I'm going to click on the E aside of weight for envelope. Let's move it over here a little bit. So I'm going to create an envelope that takes this setting from a value of 1 to 0. And then I'm going to copy this envelope, paste it into the weight option of the yum text, and just invert the keys. So then when it goes from 1 to 0 in the fruit text layer, and it goes from 0 to 1 in the yum text layer, that is when the agents will transfer. So I'm going to select this little key icon here. And I'm going to create a key around frame 115 and set that value to 1. And I'm going to set both these keys to have a tension of 1. And then let's go to frame, let's say, 130. That should be all right. And also set that tension to 1. Give it a bit of ease in, ease out. Let's right click and copy this envelope. And under the yum text, put up the properties, and let's paste it. The difference here is I'm going to select these keys and set them to zero, and keep that at a value of one. I'm going to go back into the the envelope of the fruit text. So I think I saw an error. Yes, we want to make sure that that key is exactly zero. Okay. So let's calculate this. All right, so now you can see our agents getting perfectly attached to the fruit layer and then switching to the yum text, which is exactly what we were going for. So now it's time to take all of our pieces of uh, fruit and stick them to those agents as instances. So I'm going to select the flock generator and under properties, I'm going to go to the instancer tab. Let's add an instance generator. And let's go ahead and just add all of our objects to it. So let's add the cherry, let's add the berries, the orange, kiwi, and a lemon. Now all the weight right now is at 100% and we don't want that to be the case. We want to vary it. Maybe we want more cherries than we do berries or um, less oranges because they're bigger. So let's go ahead and sort that out first. For cherry, I'm going to set the weight to hey, about 20%. And I've done this before so I do know what settings are um, necessary for this. And under berries, let's go ahead and set that to a little bit higher than the, the cherries since berries are a bit more uh, dense and they're good filler for this effect. Let's try 50%. And since the oranges are bigger, we're going to make those uh, a lot smaller for the weight. We only want a couple of them to appear in there. It's made 0 0.8. And for the kiwi and lemon slices, they're about the same size, so they can both be 2%. So now that the weight is sorted out for all the objects, you'll notice that the instances still aren't attached to those agents. And in order to make that happen, we just need to set the type to particles. And there you have it. So you'll notice that at the moment, if we switch to VPR, they're pretty big. I mean, the oranges are taking over everything. So let's go ahead and adjust the scale for some of these. For the cherry, and we're going to keep it all on random just to make sure that you know there's a bit more variance. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set the minimum to 50 and the max to 60. And for the berries, about the same, maybe 55%, 60%. And for the orange, since those are one of the bigger objects, we're going to go ahead and set that to maybe 25 and 30. And you'll notice in OpenGL, we can see the objects shrinking over there. For the kiwi and the lemon slice, those are going to be about 20, 25. So just slight variance on those. 
and let's open up the properties for the generator and we'll calculate this. So let's switch to BPR. And let's go to the backdrop color by hitting Control F5. And I'm going to right click on this square and let's just slide it up to have a white background. And also in the render globals, let's go ahead and just turn on the default settings for global illumination. There we go. So already you can see that that looks pretty cool. Everything's looking nice. Let's go to the camera view. Okay, but one thing you'll notice is that everything looks very uniform, except for the scale, which we altered, but all the objects are rotated exactly the same. There's no variance in that. So let's go ahead and, and switch that up. Under the properties, instancing tab, let's open up that generator. And we're going to go to the rotation tab for all of these and just play with the minimum and maximum settings. So for cherries, um, they're smaller, so we won't notice these too much, but I'd like to start out by setting the minimum heading and the minimum bank to negative 90. And then I set the maximum heading and the maximum bank to positive 90. So we see some of the, the stems coming through. Let me set the pitch to negative 90 as well. Okay. And for berries, let's do the same. We can actually just drag the slider, play with these a little bit. Yeah, this is all just personal preference. You'll see it start changing in a second here. The orange, let's rotate this. I always like to stick with negative values in the minimum settings and positive values in the maximum settings. And let's keep rotating the, the pitch so we can see some of these leaves start coming through. Right there and that orange up there, you can see that leaf. And over here we can see some right there. Okay, looks good. Let's go to the Kiwi Slices. Okay. Do negative 90. Just do positive 90. Okay, I'm going to rotate those on the heading a bit more. Okay, so that looks cool. And then let's do the lemon slices. Set that to negative 40. Give the bank to a positive 50. Okay. So for our camera, let's zoom that in a little bit. Bring it over here. Let's get out of VPR just so we can watch the animation happen. They flock in, they all stick to fruit. And then they switch to yum. So, very cool. Let's check out VPR during the yum text. Right, so you can see with um, pretty simplistic objects and just a bit of render settings, just turn on the default settings for GI and it, it looks great. Um, make sure to set the backdrop color to white so the environment's a bit brighter. And that looks pretty cool. Okay, definitely happy with how this turned out and I hope you guys learned a lot. You can take it to 
um, other things like flocks of birds landing on a tree branch or bats, or you could even do um, other graphics for maybe sports companies, just model a bunch of different baseball items or football items or um, extreme sports, but uh, just have fun with it and post your work online. I'd like to see what you guys come up with and I'll see you in the next one.